right hey everyone what's going on i'm hoping you can hear me this time because i did do a live random impromptu youtube live stream before but it, the audio could not be heard i don't know what the heck went on there but yeah either way i am live right now i uh, hope you guys are doing well hope all is good and uh yeah i am gonna put my beanie on there we are and got my youtube short right there uh, but yeah, if you guys are watching live, hey, what's going on? Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Feel free to leave any comments, uh, any questions. Come say hello, whatever it is. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are having a good first day so far. And yeah, I mean, I was, I've been getting used to using those uh, YouTube live streams recently. Um, but uh yeah i've decided look i want to go back onto Streamyard. i know Streamyard at least works for majority of the time i mean i say that touch wood table here and no my luck will probably cut out but hey we'll see how we get on i've got Sai back in the house saying there's a problem with the stream we can hear you <laughs> yeah i know i know I'll, I'll just go and mute myself Sai, so you can't hear me again uh, but no i appreciate you tuning in i did see you left a comment before Sai saying couldn't hear me so I really appreciate the technical difficulties I had before there. I uh, appreciate you tuning in with us. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, I hope all is good with you. And uh, yeah, I um, hope all is good with you guys as well, um, with whatever you've been up to and however your week's gone so far. Um, as for myself, it's been a um, quite a quiet week. Um, you know, again, just watching a couple of like newer movies watching some older movies as well for the first time. i tell you what, I did watch for the first time actually very uh, recently. And I, when I say very recently, I mean like two days ago, I watched the original uh, Children of the Corn. Don't know if you guys have seen that one, um, but I've never seen it before. And I was like, you know, I'm kind of intrigued to watch it. So me and Emma sat down, we watched the movie and it was bad. It was really, really bad. I mean, I feel as if like in there was a good movie. But I also feel as if it is not executed that great. Let me just put it that way. So yeah, it wasn't wasn't um wasn't ideal, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh but we've got the legendary Sin from Sin's Corner in the chat. Hey Sin, hope you're doing well. She says, Hi Mike, hope you're doing well. I'm gonna go see Monkey Man soon. Awesome. I've heard this is called Injun John Wick. This <laughs> novel. Uh, yeah, so I, I will say this though, Sin. Monkey Man is basically the Indian version of John Wick in a respectful way, of course. Um, it is more like the groundedness of the first and second John Wick movie, personally. Um, it's not like the over the top, like the fourth one where, you know, he's jumping off roofs and he's still alive and stuff like that. It's nothing like that. It's more of a grounded take. So I think you'll enjoy it anyway. It, I, I can imagine you'll enjoy it a lot more than John Wick 4. I'll put it that way. Um, but I hope you enjoy it, Sin. I look forward to seeing your review as well. I've got to check it out on Saturday as an early screening. So I'm, get, I'm looking forward to more people seeing it. I know Anthony Perez and Q Reviews have seen it. So I do need to catch up on those. I've got D Movie Man. <laughs> oh, okay. I will. Hi, D says, bye, Mike. Uh, not only do I get conned into checking out a live stream in the middle of my voice note recording, but the sound conveniently goes out as I connect in the chat. The Zara scam lives on. <laughs> uh, no, well, D, honestly, that, that live stream actually started off really well. Could hear, everyone could hear me. There was comments coming in. I was getting a little bit behind on comments. It was, you know, pretty cool. And then all of a sudden, my, the sound just went out. I was like, what? I've not pressed mute. I've not turned the volume down. The phone's not being pressed in to, like, turn my volume down or anything. I don't know what happened there, but I do appreciate you coming back. I do appreciate you coming back, though. I will say that. I will say that. So thank you, Dee. And I hope that you are doing well. Uh, since then, okay, makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, so Monkey Man's definitely a fun, just, you know, kind of John Wick-esque movie. Um, you know, it's not going to match up to John Wick. Uh, but it, it's fun. It's fun, for sure. Um, uh, God, my brother Joseph in Newcastle, bro. Look like you're born from DG Ball. <laughs> uh, now, nah, bro, I've had these glasses for ages. Um, I'll be honest with you, they're not that bad, to be fair. Um, when it came up to time to renew my glasses, um, I went for kind of like this more clear see-through ones. I've worn these glasses for ages. So, so I mean, I guess it, I'm taking this as you've not been watching my streams. 
<laughs> I don't know. Uh, but no, nah, bro, I got them from Asda, actually. So, so yeah. So, all good. All good. Uh, we've also got uh, Daniel Berry Sports Highlights saying, yo, hey, Daniel, hope you're doing well, my friend. Thank you so much for tuning in. And, yeah, I hope you guys are all uh, tune, doing well and tuning in. This feels like a throwback Z Talks, right? It's a Thursday night, we're live about 8 o'clock, half past 8. And, hey, I'm feeling good. I definitely want to bring Z Talks back, by the way, in the future. Not sure when, um, but it definitely will be coming back. Maybe with a bit of a twist as well. So more news on that very shortly. But what do you guys think of this YouTube Shorts beanie, by the way? I got given this free off YouTube, which is, thank you, YouTube, by the way. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, Sin says, I want to do a double feature tonight, the first omen as well, but I'm heading back. Uh, sorry, I'm heading out of state early tomorrow and don't have the time to stay up late. Yeah, well, Sin, I'll be honest, completely understandable. I know you've got like a trip or something booked away. Um, so I, I get that. I get that. Well, I hope you enjoy Monkey Man. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on that. If it's just out, out of the reaction or you get time to sit down and record it, whatever you decide to do. Uh, first Omen, I am probably going to go see next week. Uh, I know my partner Emma wants to go see that as well, so I will be checking it out with her. And yeah, next time at the cinema, it'll be like maybe Monday or Tuesday. It'll be... Um, I've got three movies I want to check out. There is um, a movie called The Trouble with Jessica, which I know nothing about, so I definitely want to check that one out. Uh, we've got a movie called Seize Them. Um, I don't really know anything about it apart from it's got Nick Frost. And the other one is The First Omen. I was just thinking that. I had a bit of a mind blank. But that, that is... Um, and that is the one. That is the one. Um, Sai says, I went to see Predator last night with Sammy G. It was awesome on the big screen. Oh, hey, that's awesome. Sam never mentioned that he actually met up with you, Sai, last night. So, I mean, I'm going to have to have this little chat with sammy g with all these i mean where was my invite there <laughs> so i could have been with you guys seen predator i mean you may not want me there to be fair like uh, <laughs> but no i'm glad you guys had an awesome time uh definitely i can imagine it was awesome seeing the big screen i think at the end of this month they're putting commando that's the one i would love to check out on the big screen really love that movie shout out to richard g for putting me onto that one uh, we've got the legend Anthony A. Perez in the house. Perez, what is going on, brother? Hope you are doing well. It says, Monkey Man was a good time. Loved the action, but wish the narrative had a little more to it. Didn't feel too connected to a lot of the side characters. Still a badass debut for Dave Patel. Yeah, I completely agree with that sentiment as well. And also for me, there was a little bit of shaky cam in the action sequences which I didn't like. I didn't feel as if it was needed, especially with the choreography being done really well. Um, bit of a weird editing choice with that one, I'll be honest with you. Um, but yeah, uh, but overall, uh, but overall, press, yeah, I agree. It's, it's a good time. It's a good time. I remember when I went to see Monkey Man by the way on Saturday, uh, the movie finished. And then all of a sudden, you know, when I was getting about my seat, you know, get my glasses and uh, like any rubbish that I had, I remember there was this guy like, shouting at these two, like, elderly women. And I was a bit like, huh? I was like, what the heck's going on? And I don't know, if, because they were talking throughout the movie, but I didn't hear them, by the way. I don't know if it's because I was that few, few rows up and, like, more in the centre were there, like, off to the left, like, down the front. So I didn't hear them. And then I think he was shouting at them for, like, talking for a lot of the movie or talking between them. And, like, they were swearing at each other. And I was like, whoa, what the heck? I was like, this is more action than Monkey Man? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was definitely unique, for sure. I got Mr. Dan in horror. Hey, Mike. Hey, man. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in, Mr. Dan. And I hope you are doing good. And we've also got Sunflower saying, hey, Mike. Well, hey, Sunflower. Hope you are doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, you guys, honestly, really appreciate the love tonight. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Really doesn't mean a lot, especially as this is just a random impromptu screen as well. Really appreciate it. Um, Joe says, I thought you had black frame glasses. Shows how much I pay attention. <laughs> yeah, clearly goes to show, bro. Clearly goes to show you haven't been watching these live streams. Um, but no, nah, I'm only kidding. Nah, I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it. But no, I've got a clear see-through ones. Don't know if you guys can see that really well. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to sort it because like, the lights are right there. Yeah, I don't know. It's a whole thing. Um, uh, yeah, a bit of chat between everyone. Hey, Joe, fine, landed safe. Yeah, glad you did. Sunflower, I don't know where you've gone to, but I hope you have a great time. Um, yeah, so I've seen about Commando in a few weeks. Yeah, definitely want to check that out. I'm not sure if I'm working, I'll be honest, I, um, 
if I'm not, I guarantee I'm definitely going to be there. Um, but uh, D says uh, it's time to it's time to finally give us what we've all been waiting for, my friend. Time to give up the goods and drop the skincare routine. I don't really have one, but okay, um, I'll show you what I got, what I use, I guess. <laughs> so. If you guys have any dry skin or anything, or if you don't, and you just want, I guess, uh, your face to look a bit more like a bit of shinier complexion, CeraVe, that's what I recommend. CeraVe motion light, a moister, sorry, moist, moisturizing lotion. Um, I mean, I always get it when it's on offer. I never pay the full price for it, and I always get like the, the biggest bottle you can get. And no, I did not pinch this. I actually bought this from the shop. I don't know why that's actually on there, by the way. Um, but no, yeah, I always get it when it's a little bit cheaper uh, because full prices cost a little bit more money. Um, but I always use this. So I always use like a face wash and then after a face wash, which uh, and don't use soap on your face, by the way, personal opinion. I always use like a face wash, like a, a Nivea or a L'Oreal. And then after that, apply that bad boy straight away. And my skin is normally quite shiny-ish in a way. Uh, so I guess that's my skincare routine. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration, Dee. Um, Perez says, first moment was okay for me. My review um, embargo drops in 20 minutes. Wow, okay. Very well made, very well acted, but the story was just another generic religious like, with an evil fantasy. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the um, first moment, I'll be honest with you. Uh, so I'll definitely be checking out your review, Perez. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be checking out tonight though or next week after I've seen the movie as I don't want any spoilers kind of going in apart from, I mean, this comment kind of is in a way. Uh, not not probably, of course, but, you know, kind of, I, I'll be honest, I only saw the first trailer and that's it, so I didn't even know about this last part. Um, but I'm definitely intrigued, definitely intrigued. Uh, Mike, come on the 29th. Oh, now you want me to come with you guys, Sai. <laughs> now I can. Uh, 29th, you know, Sai, I think I'm working. Um, if I'm working, if I remember right, so I'm on nine eight until Sunday, then four days off, then one twelve eleven, four days off, and then I'm on seven six, then four days off. So I'm not sure if I'll be working actually. So I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I'll drop you a message. Or I'll drop Sammy J a message. Um, but that would be cool. I got Husky HD. Hey, Husky. Hope you're doing well, man. Thanks for tuning in. Says, hey, well, hey, hope you're doing well. Uh, my brother, my brother Joe asks, he says, a question for all the movie reviewers in the chat. Does it annoy you that you go into every movie having to pick the good and bad rather than sitting back and enjoying what it is? So, um, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest, Joe. Not really. Not really, because I, I don't... So I'll be honest with you. When I go into a movie, I always go in with an open mind. Um, So, for example, right, I'll give you a fair example. So, Monkey Man. I saw the trailer for it briefly, and that was kind of about it. Um, I didn't, you know, sit down and watch, like, multiple trailers, TV spots or anything. So I, I only watched the brief trailer, and the brief trailer I watched, I was like, wow, you know, okay, this looks like a fun movie. So I went into that movie, and... At the end of the day, I get. I guess the only expectation I had going in is thinking, right? I hope I'm going to have a good time with this because it's an action movie like John Wick. So I was like, okay, cool, right? So I went into it, and as I'm watching the movie, my mind is switched off, being like, right, what's bad? What's good about this? What's terrible? Blah blah blah. However, as I'm watching it, and I said a couple of the action scenes had a bit like shaky cam in it, like that for me, I was like, right. So that's going to be maybe something I do a feedback in my review because. You know yourself, bro. Like when when there's an action movie, you want to see the actors like punch each other or kick each other, whatever it is. You don't want to see the camera shaking like this and this as like it's going on because you can't see the action that's happening. So, for example, obviously when when you're watching the movie, you'll see as well like it's beautifully shot or it's not like too dark or you can't see the picture. You know, like so that's good cinematography. So it, it's just, what I'm trying to get at is as I'm watching the movie, I'll maybe pick up on points. But I don't purposely go into a movie to be like, right, let me get my list. Let me write down the good while I'm watching this. Let me write down the bad. And like, the, and that completely takes me away from the movie because it doesn't. Uh, it's just like throughout the movie, I'll pick up on like little points here and there. So that that's just me personally. Uh, I can't comment for anyone else as well. Uh, Husky says, my friend reviews movies had the same problem. Um, I, Again, I, I think it all depends on how you guys 
go about it, you know? I, I think it really, really does. Everyone's different, of course. Uh, Perez says, a serious question, though. How much do you miss Little Foot and his friends in the Great Valley? Um, you know, I'm not going to say I don't miss them, Perez. I'll be honest. I'll say a little bit. I'll say a little bit because I'd never seen The Land Before Time before you put me onto the movie. So thank you for putting me onto that. But you also put me onto the 14 movies. So I feel like I said the end of the 14 of them. I was like, wow, I've really followed these along for like 14 movies, right? But at the same time, if you guys have only ever seen The Land Before Time, I wouldn't really recommend the sequels because they don't really grow up besides the last movie where there's actually some like character development there's a little bit more of a future for the characters. Um, but no, I missed them a little bit. I'm definitely intrigued to hear your thoughts, bro, on the TV series, however. I'll not be watching that one. No, I'll, I'll give you that much. Um, yeah, Joe says, yeah, Husky, I'd, I'd, I'd hate to watch something and I have to remember what is good and what is bad and it feel as if I wouldn't enjoy anything. Uh, again, you could always write down or you could always just... I always just make points in my mind, just being like, oh, look, I didn't like the shaky cam and this action scene. But if the movie's completely phenomenal besides that, I'll just like forget that though and be like, oh yeah, look, I'll bypass that. That's fine because the rest of the movie's great. Um, so I think it really just depends. Um, Husky says, I'm going to take a break on YouTube to get some professional equipment. I, well, Husky, what I will tell you is this, my friend, and this is a little bit of an insight for anyone who doesn't know. So I film all my YouTube videos on this iPhone as you guys are watching me live on right now. So I use my iPhone, so it doesn't cost me any money apart from obviously my phone. Um, I've got this uh, cable, obviously, just to charge my phone. Um, I do have a microphone, which is this one. Shout out to Perez for putting me onto this microphone. So I use a Blue Yeti microphone, or you can buy portable ones that cut, cl uh, clips onto your shirt, whatever. And then all I have is these two lights. And I got the, well, I didn't get them. Emma got them for me for a present. But I think they were like £25 maximum. And literally, that's all I use for my setup. I don't use anything fancy, nothing like that. And you can get free video editors. I pay for mine, which is like £40 a year, which is nothing if you really think about it. Um, but yeah, that's literally my setup, Pusky. I guess it depends what you're after with doing YouTube. Um, but yeah, for me, kind of I'll try to be as minimal as I can. The only thing I do want extra, I will be honest, is like another light to like have two at the side and one like this when I'm doing my videos. That's the only difference that I want. That's about it. Uh, but also, by the way, thank you to 22 people watching live right now. Wow. I I'm baffled. Thank you, guys. I just randomly went live and you guys are tuning in. I really do appreciate it. So keep the comments coming. I am quite behind on the comments. I will get to them. Um, I'm not going to leave you guys out or miss you guys, by the way. It's just a case of I'm a one-person crew at the moment, right? Um, and Joe's saying, do you think any more professional equipment? And yeah, a bit chat between everyone. That's cool. Uh, Perez says, pregnancy element of the first woman was in all the trailers. Definitely won't spoil it for you. I don't know if it's just because I didn't really pay much attention to the first trailer, Perez, and that's the only one I've seen. <laughs> uh, but no, nah, it's all cool. It's all cool, bro. If you spoiled anything else over, I wouldn't be on good terms with you. But no, it's all good. By the way, guys, I just want to plug this very, very quickly for you guys don't know. Anthony A. Perez, this legend right here. I'm going to be on his channel tomorrow night at 9 p.m. UK time. And we're going to be talking about Captain America Civil War in full spoilers. So head over to Anthony's channel. Set yourself a reminder. Come join us in the live chat. It's going to be a blast. And the other night when I watched it, I watched it on the Mondo Steelbook as well. How beautiful is that Steelbook, by the way? Absolutely phenomenal. Love this. Love this. And it even comes with its own little slipcase protector as well, which is very nice. Very, very nice. So, yeah, 9 p.m. UK time tomorrow. Anthony A. Perez's channel. I will be there along with Adam. What the gym? Talking about this bad boy in full spoilers. And it was nice to actually go back to a Marvel movie that is actually good compared to the rubbish that we get nowadays, which I'll talk about more tomorrow night. Um, but Husky in the meantime says, so I'm getting a deck um, so I can do more mixed tier desk and I can do software in the laptop, high quality songs. Yeah, fair enough, Husky. I know you do a lot of different... Um, I know you do a lot of different 
videos. No one had to make a movie review or anything, so I understand. It's only take two months. Wow. Did not know it takes that long. I wish you all the best, man. If you need anything, uh, please let me know. Uh, Sin says, I personally pretty much always go in to enjoy a movie, but I do notice slash pay attention to an issue stand out and also when there's some significant pros worth mentioning. Yeah, again, it's, it's one of those things you kind of, I, I guess it's different if you review movies, I guess. But yeah, I think overall, though, I always go in open minded as much as I can. Um, if I don't have an open mind on a movie, I won't go and see it because that's not given a fair review. I have debated that doing in the past, and I spoke to Anthony about that in the past, but he's always said, like, look, bro, if you haven't got, like, an open mind on a movie, don't go see it. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's fair. For example, like, Fast and Furious. Yeah. Uh, sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Movie Man is, hey, man, hope you're doing well. Going to see Godzilla X Kong on Saturday. Well, I hope you have a great time. Definitely a fun uh, monster movie for sure. Definitely a lot of big, dumb monsters fighting each other. You'll have a blast, my friend. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Uh, Perez says it depends I've been watching movies for so long and always have been super opinionated about them for me it isn't about locked in score but more of a feeling yeah I can understand it's not about good or bad I always want something to be good when I walk into it so my brain just deciphers what didn't make it good to me instead of going for the bad yeah I think that's the best way best best way and good description as well good description for sure Perez yeah I think that's the best way to go into a movie um, got life in the fast lane scene, even on even Z. Well, hey man, hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, really appreciate it. I think you're brand new here, if I'm not mistaken. If you are, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we've got Sai as well saying, I've been also watching Late Night with the Devil for the second time. It's just as good as the second watch. Awesome. Uh, definitely a movie I want to watch again, Sai. Yeah, there you go, Joe. I know you were asking for suggestions earlier. Late Night with the Devil, if you can. Great movie. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, but yes, yeah, I awesome to hear that you watched it again. I'm definitely looking forward to a second watch. I think it comes on Shudder this month as well. So I'll definitely be checking it out. But I'm glad that on the second watch it holds up as well. Um, Husky says, for me, I'd have to put the thought of reviewing at the back of my mind before I talk about it. However, usually the movie isn't too memorable, so you can forget some parts. Yeah, a lot of movies nowadays, Husky, uh, are forgettable. A lot of them aren't memorable either. And a lot of movies nowadays, just you watch it, switch your brain off, that's all you think about done dusted really so yeah i think it all depends you've got a good point though definitely agree definitely agree um my setup should be yeah excuse me, i was set up that's awesome um life in the fast lane said i bought a snowball mic from cx and it made a world of difference okay um i mean don't get me wrong dude uh life in the fast lane uh, apologies for any ignorance here. What's a snowball? Is that a microphone? I'm, I'm guessing it is. Um, let me know if you're still watching. Let me know if you're still watching. Um, <laughs> D says, out of curiosity, I mean to Perez, but says, how do you rationalize the outrage and hatred that Natalie Portman gets from various people? Do you think there could be an underlying attraction there? Well, I can only speak for myself. Not for me at all, D. I'll be honest with you. I just don't like the actress at all. I've been vocal about it. Uh, not saying I'm proud of it. Just generally, I'm going to speak my opinion. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Never been a fan of Natalie Portman. Don't know if I ever will. She'll have to do a lot to change my mind, I'll be honest. But no, no attraction for me. I just, just don't like it. Um, Lewis says, what's up, Mike? Hey, Lewis, hope you're well, man. Hope you're doing good. I'm good. Hope you are too. Uh, finished watching a gentleman series on Netflix from Guy Ritchie. Wow, it's a great watch. Have you seen it yourself? If so, what's your thoughts? Uh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed the series, man. I know my parents have seen it and they loved it. Um, I will be honest. I saw the Gentleman movie back in cinemas when it was released. And I wasn't huge on the movie. And I think it's because I don't like Guy Ritchie. Um, but I try to go on his movies that, you know, open-minded. If I go watch the movies. Um, and I just wasn't a fan of it. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It wasn't to the point where I would never watch it again, right? It wasn't like that bad for me personally. Um, it wasn't like flat out terrible, it just wasn't great. So, because I wasn't huge on the movie, I just haven't watched the series, unfortunately. Um, but I've been hearing great things, so I might bail up. Sorry, I might bite the bullet and watch it, but at the moment, haven't seen it, my friend. Uh, Husky says, Anyway, gotta go. Um, apprentice is on to Well, hey, Husky, I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for watching, man. I enjoy the apprentice, my friend. <laughs> just ended the chat. <laughs> oh man well cinematic hey man hope you're doing well thanks for tuning in 
Well, you can stay at cinematic, but Malignant can go, my friend. It can go. Um, Demi Man, yeah, that's probably someone who eats on that report when Clay just loves them the most. Um, absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> yeah, Natalie Portman can go do one, my friend. I just don't like the actress at all. I don't know. I mean, if you guys are watching live right now, let me know in the comment section. Are you a fan of Natalie Portman or not? If you're if you are a fan, let me know why. If you're not a fan, let me know why as well. Because I know Sin's not a fan like me, so it can't just be the two of us, right? There's got to be more people than that. But yeah, nah, bro. Don't don't have any love for her at all. Worst part of Star Wars, tell you that much. Um, uh, si actually, maybe not the worst part of Star Wars, but not great. Uh, Sai says, Captain America's of War is good, but it's no Winter Soldier. I agree. Which, in my opinion, is the best movie of the MCU. Sorry, which opinion is the best MCU movie? I disagree, Sai. Um, don't get me wrong. It's a solid movie. It's definitely in, like, probably top six movies in MCU, I can't, you know, I can't disagree with that. It's definitely up there in the ranks. I think for me, and this is a really hot take, and I don't know anyone else with this take. I'll tell you what my favourite MCU movie is, and that is a movie I don't think gets enough love. Captain America, the first Avenger, the first ever Captain America movie. That is fantastic. That is a movie I wish they would bring Red Skull back and explore a little bit more of him. I think it doesn't get enough love it deserves. I mean, it gets overshadowed by two awesome sequels, but this for me is the epitome of MCU. Um, but that might just be me personally. I know everyone's like Endgame, Winter Soldier and stuff. I understand great movies, but first Avenger for me all day long. Um, but in the future, I do actually plan on doing an MCU ranking. So... Um, probably up to uh, until Endgame. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, that will be there soon. Uh, since saying, got to take off, have a great stream. Well, hey, Sin, I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for watching. Enjoy Monkey Man, and uh, hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Um, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. We've got uh, D, D Movie Man says, from a personal perspective, when do you find that criticism of a film begins to bleed more into nitpicking and being oddly finicky? Um, is it possible to critique something without doing that? Yeah, I, I do, D. Yeah, I do. I think it's because, I mean, if you guys watch my channel or you watch, like, say, Anthony Ray Press's channel, even, like, D Movie Man or Sin's Corner, Cinematic Tendency, uh, etc., like, all these awesome guys. Go subscribe to each other as well and go subscribe to them. Awesome, awesome people. So, I, I think... I, so, for example, when I watch a movie, I will then go watch other people's reviews. Or sometimes I will watch other people's reviews before I go see a movie, but I'll try not to. Um, so I think sometimes being a little nitpicky is not worth it, really. Because, for example, right, say if the sound wasn't as good in one scene compared to the rest of the movie, that for me I wouldn't put down as a nitpick because I'm just like, well, for 90% of the movie, the sound's great. Unless that one scene was absolutely flooded and terrible with sound issues, then maybe it would affect the movie. Um, but I, I think... Um, and in terms of me finding... Going back to Dave's question here, when do I find a criticism begins bleeding more into like nitpicking? I think it's when someone wants to maybe try to be a little bit different. And the reason I say that is because there's a lot of people that will hate a movie for the sake of hating a movie. And don't get me wrong, I know a lot of people want to see a bad reaction. A lot of people want to click those videos. A lot of people want to, you know, you know, have that negative mindset on a movie or like maybe they're thinking of it looks terrible. So, oh, hey, here's someone saying it's terrible. Great, let's do that. So some people, I guess, jump on board the trend. Obviously, not everyone... I'm not saying certain. I'm not saying that particular people do. It's just sometimes it feels as if like someone's hating the movie because they're hating the movie. But I think in terms of bleeding more into nitpicking, I think it's when they're like really picking the most minutest little detail to be like, yeah, this wasn't great, and I'm just like, I can maybe get where you're coming from, 
but I think that's maybe a bit too far because like when I watch a movie, if I've got positives, great. If I've got negatives, I will maybe forget some of those negatives if the rest of the movie is fantastic. Like for example, like Godzilla minus one, uh, I give it like four and a half stars out of five. I still stick to that. I gave it that because I want to be able to give it a five star on a, maybe a rewatch and have more appreciation for it. Or maybe like one little thing in it, maybe stop me from doing it. But that's why I do like a rewatch of it at some point and see if my score would be the same, maybe less or maybe more. Um, so I think it really depends on the person, really, D, and maybe if they're trying to get a reaction or not. I, I think that definitely factors into it for sure. Um, uh, Perez says, oh, if you don't want to spoil it once twice for the first woman, then you'll hate to hear that little foot and ducky appear in the third act. <laughs> oh, man, imagine the Land Before Time characters in the first woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be terrible. Oh no, no, Preston, especially not Sarah's there. I hope not. I hope not. Um, uh, Mr. Movies to Madness says, I haven't seen Dune Part 2. A uh, great movie, definitely recommend checking it out. Um, have had a great day. Hey, well, I hope you've had a great day as well. I hope you have, man. Uh, great to hear from you as well. And thank you for tuning in, Harry. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, Cinematic says, Last night, I watched the first episode of The Gentleman on Netflix. So far, so good. Hey, awesome to hear, Cinematic. Yeah, I'm glad glad to hear that um, the first episode was good, at least. Again, I've I've been hearing mostly positive stuff about it. Um, I'm not really a big TV guy, I'll be quite frank, unless it's like Cobra Kai mainly. Definitely waiting for that new season to come out. Um, and, you know, certain other shows like Squid Game and You. Um, I'm definitely be checking those ones out. But... In general, now nah, I think the last TV series I binged, apart from an anime, was Ted Lasso. I did enjoy Ted Lasso. Third season, mm, not so much. Uh, but the first two seasons were really good. Um, but yeah, gentlemen, I say I've not got any desire to watch it, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. Um, for instance, I'm glad you took back the worst part of Star Wars. Um, I always, I mean, I mean, I almost jumped through the screen. <laughs> I know, I know, Perez. I know how much you love Portman, but she wasn't a great part of Star Wars. Let's let's be honest with you. Um, but I know you'll fight me to the death on that one. I know you will. Um, D says, "What's one harsh truth you have about something movie related, and one harsh truth about something related to everyday life that that many might not agree with?" Wow. Okay, that's a deep question. A great question as well, though, D. So thank you for that. Um, so okay, let me take this one at a time. Um, so what's one harsh truth? Um, okay, I'll do the, the, the one about life first. So, what's one harsh truth that something about sorry, something related to everyday life that many might not agree with? Um, okay, so one, one harsh truth that some people are really selfish and they don't realize it. Um, the reason I say that is. For example, um, okay, how can I channel it? How can I say this without um, without causing a controversy here? So what I mean is, um, there's a lot of things in life where you hear these devastating stories, but a lot of people put something that maybe happened to them, like an inconvenience in their day, as that being worse than that stories that's happened um that's that's the best way i can probably put that and the reason i say that i might not agree with is that people will be like yeah well this has inconvenienced me this is like been the worst thing that's happened to me today or like this has caused this problem or you've caused this problem etc and i'm just like well do you not realize like how easy this can be fixed and there's worse things than that going on right now um, so I think it's sometimes not realising how selfish some people can be sometimes. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not saying that against you guys watching or anything like that or anyone who comes to the channel. I just mean, like, in general life, if you really think about it, there'd be someone you know who thinks that something they've got going on is the worst thing ever in life. And don't get me wrong. Some people have tragedies, which it, it is. In that situation, it is the worst thing ever in life for them. But I mean, just, like, say, like, a little mind... What I'm trying to get at is a little minor inconvenience in 
in your day, some people can think that's the worst thing ever. Then say like a tragedy that happened in America recently with the Baltimore, for example, uh, which it, it, I guess life perspective. I guess that's the best way I could say it. life perspective in a way. Um, and then what's the harsh truth about something movie related? Um, that many might not agree with. Um, that's a again, it's a deep question. Um, uh, okay. Um, I think that Lightyear is a really good movie, and the reason I say that is, uh, with Lightyear and. And people may disagree. Is this was meant to be the movie that inspired the the Buzz Lightyear toy, right? And this was set in about 1995, if I'm not mistaken. Now, many might not agree with because a lot of people trashed Lightyear. A lot of people were like this is terrible, one of the worst movies Disney's ever done. I couldn't disagree more. I think this, this is a really good movie. I think that in terms of the story of Buzz Lightyear, it's a really good story. It's a motivational one for kids. And of course, you guys know yourself, whenever Hollywood make a movie, a lot of times that movie's marketing will purposely make the movie so they can sell like popcorn buckets, they can sell action figures, they can sell like sticker books, uh, coloring books, all that kind of stuff. So I feel as if this movie right here, when they made this to be kind of like a prequel, I could easily see if kids were to watch this, they might be like, oh, hey, I want to own a Buzz Lightyear toy. Buzz Lightyear seemed like really, really cool. But a lot of people didn't really seem to get that vibe from this. They just thought, oh, yeah, this doesn't really seem like a prequel or this is not going to be like the great prequel that inspires like the Buzz Lightyear or Toy Story. But I'm just like, it's a different vein completely. Um, so, yeah, that's my hot take movie related day, I guess. Um so I hope I answered your question okay. I hope I did. Uh, Perez says... Uh, uh, Perez says, get in, uh, sorry, got to, got to roll out in a moment, but good stuff, brother. Excited for the stream tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Again, I'll be on Perez's stream tomorrow at 9pm UK time to talk about Captain America Civil War in full spoilers. Definitely come join that discussion. Uh, that will be a great time. Uh, we've got uh, viewer Drew. Hey, Drew. Hope you're doing well, man. Thanks for tuning in. Excellent news. I'm on 880 subs. That's awesome, Drew. You'll be at 1,000 before you know what, my friend. You've absolutely been climbing up the ranks recently, so congrats, man. Um, well deserved, Drew. And you're on every live stream, so I really appreciate your support as well. Uh, Perez says, what is the worst part of the Back to the Future trilogy? I know you love the franchise, so what's the one thing about it that you've always disliked? Great question. And also, an easy answer. Back to the Future Part 2. The reason I say Part 2 is because I like the movie. Don't get me wrong, of course, I love all the Back to the Future movies. Um, especially the first one, of course. The first one's my favourite, then number three, then number two. The one thing I think is the worst part about Back to the Future trilogy is the second movie goes back to the first movie and it kind of relies on the first outing to suffice the story. Whereas in the first 15, 20, 25 minutes of part two, where it's all in the future, that is great. It's different. It's something completely out there compared, compared to the first movie. It's its own thing. It's doing its own thing and it's working really, really well. But then the incorporate storyline to go back to the first movie, to the Enchantment Under the Sea, which, don't get me wrong, is, we all know, we all love that scene, but I feel as if it doesn't really give much extra to that first scene or really needed to do that. They could have done a different angle with it, and I wish they did. So I would say that part of the entire trilogy is the worst thing about it, personally. Um, but that might just be me. Uh, my brother Joe says I'm still here listening. Hey, appreciate you, Joe. Thanks for still listening. I uh, really, really do. Uh, I've got uh, Jason as well. Hey, Jason, hope you're doing well. Says, hey, Mike, I'm just hanging out at uh, Jiffy Lube getting my oil, oil changed. Uh, well, Jason, yeah, awesome to hear, man. I hope the oil change goes okay. I hope everything's okay with the car as well. And uh, definitely my photo with you at the moment, you and your family, Jason, as well. Uh, but I appreciate you tuning in, man. I uh, hope you're doing well. 
Um, and he said, I just saw a review on Monkey Man. It sounds like it's not as action packed as the trailer made it look. Uh, so yeah, I'll be honest, Jason, it's more like more story in a way, like not in a bad way, so to say. Um, because the character development on Dev Patel's okay, uh, like he's a likable character. Um, the action scenes do hit really well though when they do happen, there is quite a few of them as well, especially like towards the end. I would say there's definitely like one or two action scenes per act. Um, I, the thing is, the trailer is always going to sell on the action. It's not, don't get it wrong, Jason, it's not John Wick level where it's like action scene after action scene after action scene, like continuously throughout. Um, you know, like nothing like that. Um, but there is some good action and still worth checking out. I, I think you'll enjoy it. It's definitely more of a grounded John Wick, more like the first two, I will say, than the fourth one. I'm glad it's not like the fourth one personally. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is me catched up to the comments so far, uh, which is great. Um, sorry, guys. Sorry, drink went around the wrong way there. Uh, but yeah, um, all caught up to the comments as of right now. So I appreciate all you guys leaving the comment. I really, really do. If you're watching live, feel free to leave a comment. Come say hello. Uh, if you want to ask a question, feel free to ask a question. Whatever you'd like to do, I really, really do appreciate you guys. Just trying to spend any of your Thursday with me and um, just trying to ask any questions, any comments, anything like that. Um, I have got a few people watching. I mean, if you're watching and you maybe want to join, drop me a message on Facebook. You can probably fire over the link and feel free to come come chat. Um, the invite's there. Uh, if anyone wants to come join, um, I will keep an eye out on my Facebook. <laughs> but if you do, um, but yeah, if you don't want to join, that's all good, guys. All good, not to worry. Let me just quickly pop this back on the shelf. go and uh yeah if you guys haven't already by the way um feel free to um on the channel head over and watch my unboxing for suzume collector's edition um and also suzume steelbook so two videos i put out the other day um steelbook and collector's edition feel free to watch the unboxings of them as well um really cool videos i definitely prefer the steel book over the collector's edition the steel book is absolutely beautiful that's the front and that's the back absolutely wonderful the steel book one one of my favorite steel books actually it's really really nice um so yeah did videos on them feel free to check those out as well um in terms of videos coming up you guys might be wondering okay what's coming up on the channel uh, i have got my american pie ranking video coming very shortly uh, it is currently on patreon if yeah if you guys aren't subscribed to patreon link down below in the description box at two pound per month memberships i've got so many early access videos in there and exclusives that won't ever be on youtube uh so feel free to join i uh, got my hoodie on as well new merch designs are coming very very shortly so i will probably make a little video on that and announcement as well um so definitely be in and look out for that i might even put some of my merch designs on sale and I might also do a competition to give away maybe a hoodie. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comment section in this live chat. And uh, if you guys are interested, I might even do a giveaway of the hoodie as well. That would be really, really cool. Of course, a fresh hoodie in multiple different colors we have. Um, so I will have a look to get you a hoodie as well. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are up for that competition, let me know in the comment section. We can maybe arrange that too. Um, but yeah, in terms of videos coming up, I've got a few um unboxings to do well they're on on patreon early um but i've got a couple to fill them um i'm going to be watching the first omen so there will be a review on the first omen more than likely um there will be um there will be uh, maybe a review on the movie sees them uh that will be a review as well um i've got some movie reviews lined up i've also got some different videos lined up as well so this month at some point um i am going to go to a different cinema that's in my local area and i'm going to do a re like a video of the cinema itself um so that'll be really cool something a little bit different 
Um, I'm going to definitely do some more vlogs for you guys as well. So keep an eye out for some vlogs. Um, they will be coming very, very shortly as well. Uh, we've got Jason saying, when are we going to get more Cobra Kai? Jason, that's a good quick question, my friend. That's a good question. I think it's currently being filmed right now, if I'm not mistaken. So I have a feeling it's going to either be a Christmas release or a New Year's release. That's what I think. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the new Karate Kid movie comes out this year or beginning of next year. Um, and I know they're going to want to kind of tie in a Cobra Kai release around then when it's hot. So people will be at Cobra Kai be like, oh, of course, he's Karate Kid because he's got Daniel LaRusso in. Um, so I'm guessing it'll be very shortly because they are filming it right now. I saw like uh, William Zabka, Johnny Lawrence, put out an Instagram story saying it was filming with uh, Martin Cove. So I'm guessing very soon. I'm guessing. Because it doesn't take them long to edit the series either from the past. Um, Jason says, I feel so far behind on movies, Mike. I was going to watch Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, but I feel like I need to watch Afterlife first. Yes, Jason, I would definitely say before you watch Frozen Empire, watch Afterlife because it sets up all the new characters like Finn Wolfhard, for example. Um, all of them are set up in Afterlife and it gives you a backstory as to like who they are and how they get to the point of Frozen Empire. I mean, there's not so much in Frozen Empire that develops in terms of on, on top of Afterlife. But you still need to know who the new characters are and the, and the relationships and friendships. So you definitely need to watch Afterlife first, personal opinion anyway. You definitely need to have seen it before watching Frozen Empire. So at least you can get the characters and kind of get a bit more of the development and like why they're there and who they are. Because if you're going to Frozen Empire, you might be a bit like, well, who's Finn with Fart? Who's McKenna Grace? Who's Paul Rudd? Like what relation are they? Like, like where do they tie in? So yeah, watch Afterlife first though. Uh, it's a good movie as well. Afterlife's really good. Frozen Empire, for me, not so much, unfortunately. Uh, but Afterlife, yeah, really, really good movie. Really, really good movie. Um, but yeah, again, if you guys are watching live right now, um, uh, feel free to drop me a message on Facebook and feel free to come join the stream. Um, got British Empire, but still Dan saying, Joe, well, hey, British Empire, but still Dan, hope you're well. Uh, I think my brother Joe is still in the chat. Uh, I think so. Yeah, if you guys are, feel free to talk amongst one another. Um, I'll just quickly check my Facebook, see if uh, anyone wants to just drop me a message. Probably not, but we'll have a look. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, not at the moment. So it's all good. It's all good. Um, um, have you watched... Sorry, have you watched... Greenland 2019. Uh, let me check what that is. Um, Greenland. Ah, okay. Right. I know. Of, and so I haven't seen this movie. I know of it though. Um, Gerard Butler. That's the one. Yeah. I think. Did that not come out kind of around uh, COVID time? If I'm not mistaken, I think. I feel like it might have. Uh, no, I, I missed that one, but I, I think I remember hearing like, like okay stuff about it, though. Um, I could be wrong, but I think I heard okay stuff about it. So, no, I've not seen Greenland, though, however. I've not seen it. Um, but, yeah. Um, if you guys are uh, watching live, again, thank you to anyone who is watching live right now. I really, really do appreciate it. And um, feel free to leave a comment, a chat. Again, if you guys want to join the live stream, drop me a message on Facebook, get you on the stream. Um, okay. Um, I nearly fell out of my seat watching it. Oh, okay. I mean, in terms of, uh, was it that funny or that bad it was laughable or was that intense you got caught up in it, uh, Dan? I'm not sure. Um, uh, I'm intrigued by that comment though I'll be honest with you um, alright so we've got D Movie Man he says as someone who has a Patreon themselves yeah uh, what would you personally look for as a Patreon subscriber what perks do you or would you personally appreciate in a subscription okay that's a good question um, so if I was to join anyone's Patreon which by the way at the moment I'm not on anyone's Patreon I'm not against joining anyone's Patreon but it's just I haven't 
found anyone whose Patreon I am interested in subscribing to. Um, I would want ideally early access to videos because I want to be able to like watch content that's not on YouTube. Because for example, I always check my subscription feed and if there's new videos, I will more likely watch those new videos. And recently when I've caught up on all the videos, I have been going through like a back catalog of uh, some people's channels, right? I've been going through a bit of a back catalog. Um, so yeah, early videos would definitely be one. Um, maybe discounts to merch that they do, because I'd be interested in buying merch if I'm supporting that channel. Um, I would also probably want um, like an, like a say on what videos they make. Um, so I guess there's a couple of like perks that I offer in, in a way, because I want to try and make perks on Patreon that people are interested in what people are actually going to get like good value out of their money for. So like extra entries and competitions, um, like an actual like get a pick movies for me to review and watch that I've never seen before. So um, you know, for example, I know at the moment I've got like the Italian job with Mark Wahlberg to watch. Um, Last Action Hero uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the letter of Nuremberg, I think it's called, um, Jason recommended. So there's three movies I've never seen before and I didn't get to check out. But to kind of answer more of your question, um, I guess like more like say or maybe like influencing some things that go on someone's channel because I think that's always really important. Um, so for me personally, that's what I would like because I would I'd like to support people and people's patrons as well. Um, yeah, I think I would have to have a bit more of a think on that one day, but top of the bat, that's what I'm going to go for. Um, but Dan says intense for Greenland. Okay, okay, I'm going to add it to my watch list as well. I'm glad to hear that because that that's a good I, that that's good to know. It's good to know. Um, I've got Danny Jukes in the chat. Hey, Danny, hope you're doing well, man. He says, hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Hope you are too. Uh, what do you think of Matrix 5's inner work with Drew Goddard as director and Lana Wachowski as executive? So I've never seen the Matrix. <laughs> so I'm maybe not the best person to ask. I've never seen any of them. I know you guys are shaking your head right now. I know. I've got a literally a hoodie says I've not seen that movie. It is so true. Um, yeah, in terms of Matrix 5, okay. So I think if they can make a good story, then go for it. If they can make a story that is going to please fans, that is going to maybe bring new fans to the franchise, a movie that is going and is worth warranted, then absolutely please make it. Um, but if you're going to make it like Resurrections, which a lot of people have said that movie was utter garbage then don't bother because it's just going to get badly received again and there's the sake of making a movie or for the sake of making a movie. So, yeah, in that essence, Danny, it depends how they play it, but if it's for a cash grab, don't bother. If you're actually going to put passion and, like, soul into it, then, yeah, go for it. But I can say that about, like, any franchise, you know, really. Um... We've got Del Boy. Oh, hey, Del Boy. Hey, hope you're doing well, man. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Been a while, Del Boy, but hope you're doing well. Uh, 1984 was a massive year for films and retrospectively a good year for what we now consider classic films. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you think you can predict what films will get the 40th anniversary treatment? Oh, OK. Um, now, when you mention 40th anniversary treatment, do you mean in terms of movies released in 1984 and like a 40th anniversary treatment this year? Or do you mean movies like as of now, Del Boy, in 40 years' time? I'm guessing the 1984 ones. And if so, I'm going to have to quickly Google um, 1984 movies. I think Karate Kid was 84, right? Um, let's have a look. Okay, so let's have a quick search here. Again, I'm guessing I'm guessing you're relating to 1984 because you mentioned that as well. Um, so I'm going to guess. I'm going off a list here. Um, well, I know Terminator is getting a 4K, so that will be getting like probably a 40th anniversary one. Um, possibly Ghostbusters with Frozen Empire and with that Ghostbusters kind of train at the moment. Possibly that one. 
Um, let me have a look. Um, uh, I think the Karate Kid, yeah, the Karate Kid did come out in '84. I was right. Um, I think Karate Kid because Cobra Kai and with the the reboot, it they put for Karate Kid on 4K. But I wouldn't be surprised to do like Steelbook release for it as well because it's like 40th anniversary Del Boy. Plus, it's a massive influential movie, great movie as well. So I think Karate Kid. Um, let me have a little look because there's a lot of here. I would probably think they would like they should get the sorry, they should get the treatment, but they don't like Nightmare on Elm Street. I think probably deserves it, but probably won't. Um, probably with the whole copyright and laws and stuff going on with that at the moment. Um, I will also say, uh, I'm just literally having a look right now, maybe Dune. I've never seen the original, but with the popularity of the the new movies, maybe the studios might try to do a cash grab on the older one. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, again, some of these uh, the Odell boys probably because of just nostalgia or in terms of like they've done a newer movie of them, so they'll milk the older movie. Um, so there's just a couple of examples. Um, yeah, they're just a couple of examples just from just from like looking at a list and maybe movies I've seen or heard of. So I'm, I'm going to go with those ones. There's probably a lot more of them that deserve the 40 anniversary of treatment anyway, but we'll just have to uh, wait and see. Crazy that some of those movies are coming for years. Today is Captain America Winter Soldier 10th anniversary. Wow, I did not realise it was 10 years old. That's flown by. Great movie though. Really, really great movie. Um we've got uh Greenland is a great movie. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I've been hearing good things. I've heard pretty much everyone who ever has talked about Greenland it's good, so I'm gonna have to watch it out. Uh Joe says, Yeah, yeah, Patreon. I enjoyed doing it, but in the end I got myself exhausted with game and live streaming communities. Yeah, I think it depends how you manage the Patreon and what perks and stuff you have on there as well. Everyone's different. Everyone will offer something different, of course. Um, for me, personally, it depends how you manage it. I always try to give as much as I can on there, and I always try to put extra stuff on. But I just don't say offer anything that you can't deliver, so to say. Um, so, yeah, I think it really just depends. Um uh, British Empire, but still Dan says, Z, you really need to do a Monkey Man review when it comes out. Yeah, well, believe it or not, Dan, I've actually got reviewed it on my channel because I got to see it early. Uh, I got to see it on Saturday. So if you haven't seen my review of Monkey Man, it's on the channel right now. Go check it out. Uh, I've got Jamie Powell. Hey, Jamie, hope you're doing well, man. I uh, hope you are doing good, my friend. I uh, says, good evening, sir. Hope you're well. Uh, yeah, hope you are too. I uh, says, seen any movies this weekend? I'm seeing Monkey Man. Still think of Hey Arnold. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Love Hey Arnold. And the first omen. Uh, yeah, great picks, Jimmy. Great picks. So I have seen Monkey Man. I didn't review on my channel, but um, you know, if you want to go and open minded, not hear anyone's thoughts before it, maybe check it out after you've seen the movie, whatever. I'll be on the lookout for your thoughts. Um, and first omen, yeah, I'm definitely intrigued by it. I think it will probably do well at the box office as well. Um, in terms of movies at this weekend, in terms of going to see movies, no, uh, because I am working all weekend and working. Um, today, well, I've worked today, sorry, I'm working tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, um, 9 in the morning until 8 at night. So I will not be going to cinema. But next week, though, Jimmy, I will be going to see The First Omen. I'll be watching a movie called The Trouble with Jessica. And I'll be watching a movie called um, First Omen and, oh, and Seize Them. Seize Them comes out. I don't really know much about Seize Them or Trouble with Jessica, but I'm still going to go check them out, and nonetheless. But I hope you enjoy Monkey Man and First Omen as well when you get a chance to check them out. Um, okay, so... I've got um, a few comments, people talking between each other, so yeah, it's awesome, you guys. Feel free to have a conversation. Uh, Delboy says, cheers, Mike. I agree with, with choices, but also think Elm Street will get done. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Fourth anniversary seems to be a hot time, so good to do, uh, so good to do a show for this on 1984. Wow, 1985 on the corner, Excelsior, sir. Yeah, it's crazy, Delboy. That the time has just flown by. 
Yeah, it's crazy. I would love to see Nightmare on Elm Street get like a full box set release and like a nice 4K or a nice like Blu-ray art packaging. Um, I don't know if it will happen though because of the whole like licensing and um, court cases and stuff that's going on with that and I know Friday the 13th had that recently. I would like to see it would get the treatment, um, but I think it really depends. I think it really, really does. I say I would like to see it, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, I got Jimmy says, uh, "What do you do for a living?" Uh, yeah, Jimmy. So um, I work in fraud. Um, I work in like call center fraud. So I talk nearly like eleven hours a day. So my voice is going a little bit. So I'm probably going to wrap this up in a minute. Um, but yeah, man, I've been doing that for many, many years since 2017. 2017, yeah, seven years, crikey, wow, that has flown by. Um, so yeah, long time, my friend, long time. Uh, Jason says, Do you have a favorite actor or actress in a horror movie? Oh, okay. Um, I'd probably go over Jack Nixon and Shannon, great performance, and Sissy Space, SpaceX, and Carrie. I've never seen the original Carrie. I know you guys are probably shaking your head right now. I've seen the Chloe Grace Moretz one, uh, which I probably shouldn't have watched, but but I have. Um, but great question. Uh, Jack Nicholson is great. Favorite actor or actress in a horror movie? Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to go for. Probably... Tobin Bell in Saw, because every time they've done a Saw movie, whether it is the earlier ones, whether it's the sometimes ridiculous sequel ones, whenever he's been in them, he's always the highlight of them. He's such a memorable character. Um, I've always enjoyed him in movies as well. He's a great actor. I don't think he gets enough praise because everyone always just sees him as a jigsaw, but he has done other movies, which he is great performances. So I'm gonna go with Tobin Bell for actor. Um, in terms of like sequels and like big like movie series, Tobin Bell. Um, actual one-off movies, I'd have to have a little think. Um, actress, I don't know if I do. I don't know if I do. I have to really think about it before I give you an answer for that one, Jason. And also male as well for like single performances. Um, but great picks though. Great picks. Um, never end the story. It's getting a 40th anniversary. Never end the story for an anniversary too. Wow, okay. Okay, wow. I didn't realise that was 40 years old as well. God, I feel old. I feel old. I really do. Um, Jeez. Uh, Jimmy also has been working 12-hour shifts five days a week for 14 years. Dude, what the... Oh, Jamie, I don't know how you do that, man. So I work um, 11 hour shifts, four on, four off, and that's my, my permanent rotation. Um, so, yeah, Jamie, um, I know you're a carer, right? Um, that's crazy, dude, that you do that. Like, um, I mean, dude, in the amount of like YouTube videos you do and free time you get, yeah, I can't imagine that being a lot. I mean, Hey, I don't know your life, so I could be wrong, but I can't imagine that being like a lot of free time you get to yourself and I like your wife and stuff as well, you know. But man, that's crazy. That is crazy. But man, yeah, hey, fair play to you, man. If you are, Kerry, I believe you are. That that's a hey, fair play to you, man. And what a service as well. Um, helping the elderly or anyone who needs that care, dude. Like that, that's that's awesome. Um, but yeah, man, twelve hour days, five days in a row. Damn, they're working to you to the bone, my friend. Uh, oh, that's a lot of poop. <laughs> I, I guess so. I guess so. Uh, I don't know uh, myself, but I'm I'm guessing so. Yeah, uh, man, that, that's funny. That 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 that's made the comment of the night for sure. <laughs> uh, Delboy says, "Yeah, I celebrated 30, 35 years." Wow, Delboy, jeez. In IT support this year, time shooters fly by. Well done on your seven year itch. Uh, thanks, Del Boy. Yeah, um, I, I'll be honest with you guys, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I mean, there is times you know, it gets frustrating more than others, like any job, 
you know, you get good days and you get bad days with Shua. Um, I'd rather be doing something put more, probably more active personally. Um, but yeah, in the long run, you know, it pays pays the bills, uh, gives me a bit extra money, so I have like you know can get some luxuries or like save for my wedding, which is coming up in twenty twenty five, for example. You know, I've been able to put like savings and stuff away. Um, so you know, there's definitely some perks of it for sure. There definitely is. But thirty five years, Del Boy, wow, that is crazy i didn't even realize that you were that old to be fair del boy but fair play to you man fair play you don't look it anyway if you are i got rob from exploitation hey rob hope you are doing well uh speaking of a guy who uh, is doing movies by the way i think rob's making a movie if i'm not mistaken um or a script where he wrote is getting produced into a movie or a show i could be wrong because i'm pretty tired of my job yeah, I mean, I get that feeling for sure. I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I'll do not get tired of my job because, you know, it's time to do. I think everyone does, though. Um, I think ultimately it depends with jobs how you evaluate it. And um, the reason I say that is it depends, you know, like, right, okay, that job you do. Okay, does that pay the bills? Does that give you enough for luxuries? Like, you know, do you, do you get a good income every month? Or... Are you kind of on like the the breadline, I guess, with your wage, and it's not paying enough? Uh, it depends, like why you're sick of your well, not sick of your job, why you're tired of your job, and maybe the hours to get you to work and stuff. So definitely a lot of factors go into that for sure. Um. Oh, oh, sorry, dude. Yeah, I sold a script, not in production yet. Um, might not happen just the way it is. I uh, well, I hope it does though, Rob. Yeah, I mean, if you sold the script, um, and production. And not in production yet. Hopefully someone picks it up. I'd be interested to see what the script was. Um, well, not was, but like is. Um, and um, yeah, like why is it not in production yet? Like why is it not? Um, why is it not? Why is it not done that? I don't know. Uh, the money is fine. Hours are fine. It's just boring. Yeah, um, I think that's like a lot of jobs though, Rob. It's kind of like it becomes like the bit the mundane, um, bit like a groundhog day, like same day, rinse and repeat in a way. And born, I can understand, I can understand. Um, Del Boy says, Gotta run, Mike. Great show. Well, thanks, Del Boy. I appreciate you tuning in. Quick RP to our friend Dave from last Friday. Speak to you soon. Well, speak to you soon, Del Boy. Yeah, and uh, very quickly, yeah, I also want to do say a rest in peace to Dave from Savage Zombie Reviews. You guys may have known him uh, mainly through live streams on Scott the Movie Critics channel, um, Video Tasty's channel as well, and he does streams with other people as well. I met Dave twice on live streams. Um, I only spoke to him on two live streams. I never spoke to him outside of YouTube, which, you know, definitely is a shame. I would have liked to. I'll be honest, we just didn't. I'm not going to sit here and be like, you know, I made the effort he didn't or vice versa. We just both didn't. Um, but yeah, he died at like 43, I believe he was. Huge shame, way too soon to go. Um, from what I met him on the two streams I did, it was a really nice guy, was always really pleasant and really nice. Um, really nice to me personally. Um, he seemed like a really cool guy, always up for a laugh and everything as well. So, yeah, definitely my thoughts are with his like really close friends and his, his family at the moment for sure so rest in peace dave hope you're in a better place um so dan says have you watched in between us i have it is great i love in between us and um, we said you need to watch monkey man i already have Dan. i mentioned this before <laughs> i've done a review on my channel there's literally a movie review on my channel of monkey man feel free to check it out uh rob says i can't talk about the script because i'm in the end of year understandable dude uh, it's a horror slash with some meta comedy awesome Awesome. Well, with you doing exploitation reviews, Rob, I can't imagine it being anything less. Uh, but no, dude, I can understand you can't really talk about it, but I hope it gets picked up. I hope it gets put into production. I hope it um, something gets made. I hope it really, really does. Um, I'll be intrigued. I'll be there to watch it as well. Let me know if it ever does, Rob, and I'll I'll be there to check it out. We definitely got a collab as well soon. It's been way, way too long, my friend. Um, really didn't see it. I'll watch it now. Yeah, Dan. Yeah, I reviewed Monkey Man. Go check it out, my friend. 
Um, Jason saying that's so sad to die so young about Dave. Yeah, I know, uh, Jason. It's crazy because uh, he was 43, literally 10 years older than me. Um, crazy. Crazy. That's all I can say. Really, really is. So sad and upsetting what happened. Sure. So again, my thoughts are with Dave and his family. Uh, Rob says, me too. Yeah, man. Hey, Rob, I'm going to have to hit you up on an email or hit me up on an email um, because I would love to get you on one of my bad movie watch-alongs. I think that would be a lot of fun. And you should get Rashad on there as well. I don't know. You collab with Rashad a lot as well. So definitely would love to get you on one of those. In terms of the movie, I don't know what it would be. Um, I've definitely got a few in the pipeline I want to put on. And Jason has definitely been a subject to a lot of those as well. Um, but yeah, would definitely love to get you on one of those, Rob, for sure. I uh, definitely would love to get a lot of people on for those bad movie watch longs because they're always fun. They're always, always, always a good time for sure. Um, okay. So yeah, basically caught up to the comments. Again, I appreciate everyone watching live or after the fact. Really, really do. And the fact that you're choosing to side to spend some of your first night with me anyway. Um, I am probably going to wrap it up here because I have been talking for nearly 11 hours per day. Uh, plus this live stream, my voice feels like it is going. Um, in terms of this, though, Rob, if time and work out on dime, I'm down, sorry. I will let you know. I Usually when I do the bad movie watch longs, I usually give about a week or two weeks notice. Um, I wouldn't, like, you know, drop you a, an email, like, a day beforehand and be like, hey, do you want to join? Because I appreciate everyone's got lives and things on. But I will definitely hope it works. Um, I'll be honest, Rob, the bad movie watch longs are normally at the weekend. Um, but if worst case, if everyone's busy on the weekend, we can always do it through the week. It's not an issue. Um, but normally it's at the weekend, just to give you a heads up. No, normally it's been a Sunday night. So possibly be around then. But again, I don't know when. I would give you a lot of heads up and a lot of time to be like, hey, dude, look, do not watch along on this time. This will be the movie. This is where you can watch it. Are you down? No, I'll let you know. Um, but hopefully we can get it to work out. But again, I appreciate you guys watching. Really, really do. Feel free to give the stream a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Uh, check out my Patreon and merch down below in the description box. Uh, feel free to click that link tree and my letterbox as well. Thank you guys for watching. Really, really um, appreciate it. Uh, your weekends are usually fine, depending on time, got kids and stuff. Yeah, I, I know you do. I know you do, dude. Um, again, I would let you know about times and stuff as well, and plenty of notice, so at least you've got a heads up if you if you can join, I'll give you notice. Um, but yeah, again, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Have a nice night, um, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.